वेलकम एवरी वन टू लेक्चर नंबर ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट वन ओके सो देर आर देर आर मल्टीपल टॉपिक्स विद इन दिस फंडामेंटल राइट डिस्कशन देर आर मल्टीपल आर्टिकल्स सो दैट्स वाई ना आई एम डिवाइडिंग दिस आर्टिकल एटीन इन टू मल्टीपल सब डिविजन सो विद इन दैट दिस इज द लेक्चर नंबर एटीन पॉइंट वन ओके सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज राइट्स वॉट इज द व्यू ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स ग्लोबली in the our previous lecture okay in previous le uh, lecture number 27 okay now we are proceeding to uh, uh, learn about the fundamental rights as per the constitution with along with the articles okay so we have something that is present under the article number 12 okay article number 12 what does this article tells before proceeding to ahead uh, i will let you know that uh, the fundamental rights fundamental rights are present within the constitution from article 12 to article 35 this is present under the as we have said it is present under the part 3 of the indian constitution okay from article 12 to article 35 we have fundamental rights that is present under the part 3 of the indian constitution okay so moving ahead moving ahead we'll see article number 12 what exactly is this article 12 article 12 gives the definition it gives the definition of what of what definition of what it gives the definition of the term state of the term state in in the article we will be we will be see we will be uh, see in various uh, terms the term state is used okay so what exactly is this state it is not uh, we are talking about the state of bihar jharkhand or like that no it is completely different okay so what is this state so this article 12 provides the definition of it this state includes the government and the parliament of india and the legislature of each of the states and all local or other authorities within the territory of india or or under the control of government of india it means like whatever the bodies that we have we we will be using the term state state for them okay so the state it includes it includes what government parliament government parliament of india the legislature the legislature of each of the states now here the states which is telling a state is that state of bihar uh, maharashtra jharkhand punjab like that that is the meaning of it. this this state means but this state state word without s it includes the government parliament of india legislature of each of the states and all local or other authorities other authorities within the within the territory of india or under the control of or the territory which is under the control of government of india or under the control of government of india okay so article 12 provides us the definition of the state okay even all the government organization like sbi lic all those thing will be included under the term state okay so article 12 
provides the meaning of the state that is present under the fundamental rights. Okay, this is the this is some that this is present under the article number twelve. Okay, now article thirteen. So we have understood what exactly the article twelve. Now we have article thirteen. Article thirteen laws inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental rights that is present. The, that is the meaning of the overall the theme of this article thirteen. So laws inconsistent with or in derogation we'll understand in we'll understand 13.1 there are there are some parts in within the article 13 we'll discuss it then you will understand we'll get a clear picture of it in derogation of the funda mental rights okay what is the meaning of it so we have article 13 clause 1 we have article 13 clause 1 so uh, so what does it mean Wha what is present in article 13 clause 1 so it tells that all laws in force all laws in force in the territory of india immediately before the commence commencement of the constitution and and violating the part 3 of the indian constitution will be declared as null and void and if they agree with the part 3 they will be continued in the operation okay so now you uh, now now you will getting understand what this means laws inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental right will not exist that is the meaning of article 13 okay so article 13 clause 1 tells that all the laws in force in the in the territory of india immediately before the commencement of this constitution of this constitution and and violating the part 3 of Indian Constitution will be declared as null and void will be declared as null and void okay so now you are understanding uh, now I guess now you are getting the picture of it what this this statement means so whatever the laws the, that are enforced in the territory of India immediately before the commencement of the constitution if those laws are violate, violating the fundamental right of the people then this law then that law will be declared as null and void so laws inconsistent with or in derogation with the fundamental rights okay that will be declared as null and void so now there is second clause article 13 clause 2 what does this tell the state now what is this meaning of the state a state anything any governmental body is legislative all those things that will be included under the state the, what are the definition that we have seen by article 12 will that is the, uh, that that is the meaning of this state the state shall not make any law which takes away or modify or abridges 
दी पार्ट थ्री ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट सो स्टेट दैट इज गवर्नमेंट लेजिस्लेचर एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑल दो थिंग्स द स्टेट शैल नॉट मेक एनी लॉ शैल नॉट मेक एनी लॉ विच टेक्स अवे और मोडिफाई दी पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द फंडामेंटल राइट दिस इज पार्ट थ्री फॉर फंडामेंटल इज द इज द is the sense of the constitution that is protecting the rights of the people okay it gives the power uh, to the uh, indian citizen okay that's what is mentioned under the article 13 now if we see if we see here we have used a term that is something called that is something called law this is here we have used the term law okay okay this law now what is the meaning of this term law this has also also to be described as we have described the term state so this law should also be described okay so what is this law so now this law has been this law has been this law has been described in article 13 clause 3 okay article 13 clause 3 what does this mean this law this law includes any ordinance any ordinance order by law rule regulation notification custom or usage having in the territory of india the force of law so what what does this law means law includes any ordinances order by law rule regulation order by law that has been done so Uh, any uh, regulations notification custom or any usage that has been given in the territory of india the force of law that is term is known as the law here okay or usage having in the territory of india the force of law so what are the law that governments are making so that term that is mean by the law like what are the governments have passed the legislation legislative has passed any law so those kind of law if any ordinances or regulations have been passed or any notification has been uh, given by the government of india that this has to be followed okay so whatever the thing that 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 that's that term is known as a law so whatever the law is being passed by the legislative and implemented by the executive okay those such law cannot cannot take away the part 3 of the constitution by the people okay so the state shall not make any law that state shall not make any law that state cannot make shall not make any law which takes away the or modify the abridges of the part 3 of the fundamental okay so now we have understood what exactly this part 3 part 3 tells that laws inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental rights will be removed or should not be exist okay so what this article 3 clause 1 tells article 3 clause 1 tells that all laws that is in force with the territory of india immediately before the commencement of this constitution and if if those law if such laws are violating the fundamental rights will be declared as null and void okay now another point the state cannot make whatever the who is the government that is ruling here the state shall not make any law which takes away or modify or abridges the fundamental right okay the state cannot do cannot modify anything within the fundamental right okay now state Uh, a state uh, the, uh, within the law what does this law means so the law whatever the ordinances notifications regulations or um, uh, laws ha that have been passed by the government uh, to that has been to, uh, that has been enforced that has been passed by the legislative and enforced by the uh, executive if such law is taking away the fundamental right of the people 
cannot do the state shall not do and the definition of a state is given under the article 12 so see how connect connect this thing connect these dots okay so now the definition of a state is given and now that we are using the term state so referring what is the meaning of this state we can refer the article 12 okay and within this uh, within the 13 uh, article 13 clause 2 we have we are using the term law what does this law means what are the law that includes so that law will uh, has been mentioned under the article 13 clause 3 okay so i guess now you are understand uh, understood what exactly is this article 13 clause 3 what is the uh, uh, okay i guess like you have a clear picture of it okay now article 13 clause 4 is also present what exactly is that we'll see article 13 clause 4 so article 13 clause 4 tells that so this was added to the constitution by the 24th amendment act originally this was not present okay so this was added under the 24th constitutional amendment act in 1971 okay what it does it provides an explanation that parliament can amend the law here it, it was still that it was telling that the state cannot uh, make any law which takes away the modify now here it is mentioned that parliament can make the law okay so 24th constitution, uh, constitution amendment act 19 tells that it provides an explanation it provides an explanation that parliament that parliament can amend the law parliament can amend the law but but it cannot be an ordinary law it cannot be an ordinary law okay it has to be it has to be constitutional amendment act constitutional amendment act made under article 368 that it has to be passed by the special majority okay so now it is article 3 can provide the explanation that the parliament can amend the laws but it cannot be an ordinary law okay so amendment of the uh, laws can be made but it can't be done for the ordinary laws it has to be constitutional amendment act made under the article 368 okay okay so i i hope you have a clear picture of it so now now there is uh there is one important thing that we are seeing as ordinary law we'll uh, we'll talk about this in in detail but uh, right now just take a uh, uh, note that ordinary law and constitutional amendment act is totally different as constitutional amendment act if if we are making uh, if we are making ordinary law if we are producing for the ordinary law then it has to be passed by the simple majority it has to be done by the simple majority okay but if it is a constitutional amendment act that has to be passed by the a special majority as as we have seen that is through the article 368 okay so what exactly is this ordinary law are the ordinary law is nothing is is, is, is nothing but a spe normal law only uh, one second my mic has been different okay so ordinary law is nothing but a normal law only generally it is distinguished from a constitution law it is made and enforced by the competent authorities of the state and in determine the relation of the citizen of the state and to one another so it is like it can be it means like it can be passed by the um, ruling government also by the state uh, state legislature also okay it can be enacted that it can be enacted by the parliament also or state legislatures also okay in respectively it has to be done through the 
under the matter it, it but this uh, ordinary law can be done for those matter which are mentioned under the seventh schedule of the constitution okay so only a uh, description is that you can make ordinary laws uh, only for those matter which are present under the seventh schedule of the constitution and to pass any ordinary laws only simple majority is required but for the constitutional amendment act a special majority is required which is used which is done by the parliament okay for the example of ordinary law if if you know so uh, such as civil law civil procedure law criminal law criminal procedure law copyright law so all those such laws will include under the ordinary laws okay and constitutional amendment act uh, that, that we have that we know that uh, there are various provisions that used to be go that uh, that is mentioned like fundamental right that we are reading or uh, fundamental duties all those come under the constitution uh, constitution amendment act and uh, or constitution's uh, laws and the rights okay fundamental right right to equality of uh, uh, right to liberty right against exploitation freedom or religion cultural and educational rights okay so all those things that comes under the constitution ordinary laws that are passed by this uh, simple majority for those such matters which are present under the seventh schedule of the constitution okay so this was all about for the article number 12 and article number 13 okay in the next uh, part we'll discuss in 28.2 we'll proceed for the article number 14 and we'll uh, go as per that okay thank you if you have any doubt please connect me with me on my social media handle thank you